Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the athletic department here at the University of Southern Mississippi. It's uh, another opportunity to sit down with our director of athletics, Bill McGillis, and talk about all the exciting things that are going on right now around the University of Southern Mississippi. And, uh, Bill, there's so many of them going on, and, and it really, I guess, starts with the, the fall sports that have gotten started. Volleyball, what an exciting start they're off to. Uh, a young soccer team that's uh, getting better and better each time that they're out. Uh, cross country, the, the women's cross country team's doing some amazing things. So we'll talk about football later, but right now those, those fall sports are really uh, carrying the banner for Southern Miss and doing an incredible job. They are, and uh, you know, a lot of ten attention, rightfully so, on, on the great start to the football season and the momentum that we got. but. But I never want to overlook the other student athletes and sports that we have here that sometimes don't get the attention they deserve. And, you know, you mentioned volleyball is off to the best start in the school's history. Amanda Berkeley is doing a great job with, uh, with what's also a young team. You mentioned soccer and, and Coach Mo, you know, developing that group. And uh, Erica Brennan made her uh, debut as our new uh, women's golf coach this week. And... Uh, Women's golf team played at Jacksonville State and had, uh, I think, the low round of the tournament uh, on day three. So a great start for Erica and, and that team. And, uh, and then our cross-country team, you know, which has been unbelievable academically. Mm -hmm. The top program in America uh, when it comes to classroom performance is really making tremendous improvement uh, racing. And uh, went to LSU, went to Baton Rouge and won LSU's Invitational, which is a heck of an achievement. And uh, John Stewart, who we hired last year to run our track and field and cross country programs uh, with his staff is, is doing an amazing job. And uh, when I think about our 17 teams and, and uh, where each one is, I really see the track and field program just, it's gonna take off. That program is gonna soar in the next couple of years. I wanted to ask you, while well, we've got an opportunity, I mean, obviously, and rightfully so, a lot of focus right now on football and basketball is just around the corner, and then later on baseball and softball. But but as an athletic director, when you look at, at the programs that we've just talked about, volleyball and soccer and track and field and things like that, how do you see them in the big picture of what you're trying to do and what we want to do at Southern Miss? You know, I we've got, we've got uh, I think we had 347 student athletes uh, to start the fall semester, and we're probably at 350 to 360 right now. And um, they're all important. They all represent the university. Um, you know, our our aspirations are are really our ex expectations as well of of winning in the classroom, winning on the playing field, and winning in the community extends to all of our teams. And uh, you know, some programs have more resources than others. Some might have a better facility situation than others. Uh, and you have to take those things into account when you're, when you're establishing expectations for a program. But, but really, um, we want to provide that great educational experience to every young woman, every young man in our program. We want them all to lead with a championship ring, and I think that's possible. Um, you know, some maybe, again, have a little uh, better opportunity than others to do that. But I don't think there's a ceiling at Southern Miss. And, and uh, so really, truly, every sport is important here. Every sport is important to me. People ask me from time to time, um, you know, what my favorite sport is, what's my favorite team. And it's like asking, you know, which one of your children is your favorite, you know? And I don't know about you, but I can't choose between mine. Um, at least maybe on a, on, on a certain day you can. But uh, uh, I just love our student athletes. And we've got great coaches, great leadership, and uh, feel good about, really good about where we are feel good about our chemistry as a staff. You know, you and I have sat together in some pretty powerful staff meetings, you know, looking ahead and that involved a lot of people sharing their stories with each other. And I think we've got great opportunities, great people here. Um, I mentioned to you and some of the staff, I think the other day, one of the things that's really interesting, if you go to the University of Washington's uh, website, which happens to be Mrs. McGillis's alma mater, one of them, um, and you click on, you, you go to their athletic department website and you click on um, the uh, web page for each one of their employees. They've got their little mantra on there is who we are is why we win. Mm -hmm. Who we are is why we win. And uh, I go on their site occasionally because they do some innovative things. And every time I see that, you know, I actually think about us. And uh, 
the people are what make a program, student athletes, coaches, uh, and then the fans in large part of the backbone of, of, of what we do and, and make so many things possible. One more thing on that. I, I, one of the things I enjoy each year and I enjoy hearing you speak at it is our, our graduation lunch that we have for our student athletes who have graduated that uh, particular semester. And, and your message to their parents all the time is uh, that you believe when they come to Southern Miss that they're giving you their or giving us their best gift, their children, and it's our responsibility Absolutely. to make sure that we nurture them and, and provide for them and make sure they get out of here yep. with that college education. You're right, and, and, it's, and it's something when I visit with recruits and parents on the front end, I always talk to those moms and dads about, we understand that you're entrusting your 18-year-old or your 17-year-old or 19-year-old with us and what that responsibility is that we have and how sacred it is and how important it is to us. Um, and so, um, you know, the other thing, John, that that made me think of, you know, that, that graduation days, I know for you and I, mm -hmm. always one of the best days of the year here and a chance to celebrate with the graduates and their parents. Uh, one of the other great, great days that you and I have shared together in the last couple of years is the academic recognition banquet mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. And we, we spent a whole staff meeting a couple of weeks ago talking about it was an idea generation session talking about how to celebrate the achievements of our student athletes academically more than we ever have before. Because those stories don't, don't get on TV. They're not in the headlines, you know, and a lot of people don't hear about them. And so we're really focused this fall on, on thinking about how to celebrate those achievements in a bigger, bolder way. Um, and I think it's part of the student athlete experience that we do that. I think it's going to help send them off when they're done um, better prepared uh, and employers being more aware of what Southern Miss student athletes are all about. All right, let's talk about the last four or five weeks. Football season got underway uh, officially about four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago with the, the Mississippi State ball game. I know people around the community still talking about, uh, you know, that weekend, that event on our campus and uh, the way our football team played and things like that. That's, I would think as an athletic director, that, that's got to be exciting to hear the, 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 the enthusiasm, the atmosphere, all the things that revolved around that opening weekend of the football season. It is. It's October 1st today, right? It is. As we tape this. Yes. Um, it's incredible that September's already behind us. And, uh, but, um, you know, I was at a meeting of um, all of the athletic directors nationally in Dallas uh, about 10 days ago. And I had uh, one AD after another come up and uh, mention the improvement of our football program, having seen the Mississippi State game and having kind of tracked us since then. And uh, I think people sense what's happening. And uh, I know people in Conference USA do, you know, from the athletic directors I've spoken to, and including speaking to Rick Villarreal who's really a Southern Miss guy, but the AD at North Texas, um, you know, about our program. And uh, I know Skip Holtz, the, the great head coach at Louisiana Tech, has, has kind of made some comments to the media about, hey, don't go to sleep on Southern Miss mm -hmm. when you're talking about my team, meaning La Tech or Western Kentucky or Marshall. Um, and, and I think people recognize what's happening. Um, you know, I've thought about as we face scheduling challenges, you know, what this – uh, ascension that we're on is going to mean in terms of scheduling. Already very, very difficult mm -hmm. to, to get the kinds of matchups I want, you want, and our fans want. It might even get a little bit tougher, um, you know, as, as we restore this program to prominence. And that's what's happening. That's what's going on right now. And, uh, you know, we came out of September 2-2 two and two and uh, had hoped to be 4-0, oh, um, but so much promise. Um, you know, it, we're just light years ahead of where we were two years ago, much improved from last year. And we've got a good football team. You know, again, we don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how many games we're going to win, but I do know we're going to win games. And, uh, and we're not having to doubt that anymore. And to see that swing in optimism and enthusiasm, and to me it's really been palpable since the Nebraska game. And... Uh, you know, that game being as far away as it was, most people in, in the Golden Eagle fan base had to watch that one on TV. And, you know, you're down 22 at, at the half, and uh, 
you know, a lot of teams would have shut it down and gone home. I was in that locker room at halftime and, uh, and, and listened to Todd Monk and talk, talk to his football team at halftime right before they went out. And, uh, you know, he said, this isn't about Nebraska. This has nothing to do with, with Nebraska, the second half. It's all about Southern Miss. Who are we? Who are we? And what do we want to be? And, uh, you know, and we came out and, and played tremendous football on both sides of the ball in the second half. And, uh, you know, and the number of texts I received after that and calls and emails and messages and high fives and, and uh, you know, people at lunch today talking about it at, uh, at Lenny's. Um, and I think that is going to, I think it's going to morph its way into, into, into filling up this rock over time this year. Um, and, and I think that, you know, mo momentum is going to continue to grow. Hopefully we'll continue to win football games. But people appreciate the effort of our football team. When I walked off the field Saturday, um, I was actually a little bit choked up. And, uh, uh, and it wasn't because we lost. It was because of, to me, what was one of the greatest efforts I've ever seen uh, by a team. And left it all on the field. And, uh, and then to walk to the locker room and get the ovation that we did from the Nebraska fans uh, was really, really moving because they, they, they knew what they saw. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and our players weren't satisfied. It wasn't a moral victory for them, you know, at all. Um, instantly in the locker room after the game, they were talking about North Texas, the Conference USA season and what was next. And uh, so they've done, you know, everything they could do. I think to excite our fan base other than have two final results go our way that didn't. But the quality of play for four games, the exciting nature of our team, you know, we're one of the most exciting teams in America. This team is fifth in the country in passing, 20th in total offense, 38th in scoring, um, has, I'm, I'm virtually certain, ran more trick plays than anybody in America. You know, we got a head coach who holds nothing back you know, he's got a little fan in him, you know, and, and he likes calling those plays, mm -hmm. you know, and whether it's a fake punt, a fake kick, you know, a reverse pass, uh, an onside kick. Um, I mean, it's, it's, he's thrown the whole kitchen sink out these first four weeks, um, or maybe not. He may have a lot right. more in store maybe Saturday there, and then yeah. beyond. So we've got to do our part from here as fans and as a staff to fill up this stadium. Well, one more thing before we talk about, uh, I know what you've got some things planned for the next month or so. I think one thing that's obvious about uh, this football team is they expect to win. Coach Munkin has done an amazing job of getting them focused on uh, not a whole season. But I think you're right. I think people know now that, that Southern Miss is going to be a factor in this Conference USA race. Now, like you, don't know how many wins that means, but uh, Southern Miss is going to have a lot to say about who or what uh, is going to be the champion in Conference USA. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that you know, when you talk about confidence, and, and I thought we went into the Nebraska game a pretty confident football team, and I feel like we came out of it a very confident football team. And, uh, you know, when, when we rolled out those uniforms this summer uh, and that particular look, which was by design, you know, why we went with that color scheme, that style, um, was was in part that we hoped it would match uh, the swagger that was to come, mm -hmm. and and the the hard nosed uh, edge of Southern Miss football, and we've seen that for four weeks. You know, we haven't been perfect, you know, but but you can see that swagger coming back. And I think the more and more games we win, as confidence rises, as we get key stops, as we win games at the wire. Uh, I think I think that swagger is going to be back, um, and and it's going to be back for our fans, and and that's something that, you know, excites me so much, so much. I mean, I want it for our players first and foremost. You know, those coaches who who pour their heart into this and and, and blood, sweat, and tears every day, but I want it for our fan base, uh, who's who's so passionate, who supported this program for a long, long time through 80 years of great, great success, and, uh, and through a couple years of, of agony. And uh, so it's been, it's been you know, wonderful to see uh, the joy and the smiles back, 
brought back to, uh, to our fans. October is an important month for Golden Eagle football. Uh, several games right out here at the Rock in the month of October. Uh, a couple of tough road trips, but this is an important month. And I know you've got uh, some things that uh, you want to uh, offer to our fans to make it uh, maybe a little bit easier for them to be here and be a part of uh, what's going on now with our football program. We do, we do. And, you know, our fans have, have offered up some great ideas, mm -hmm. like they did with the helmet, like they did with the uniforms. We've got some creative fans with some great ideas. And, and even if we can't get back to every single one of them that messages us, we always take into account, you know, the thoughts that our, our fans throw at us via social media, via email, phone calls, letters, what have you. Uh, Brent Jones and his staff, uh, our marketing team has, I think, uh, throughout the summer in preparing and, and, and planning for the Mississippi State game, did a great job. They planned some things over these first few weeks that we've launched, but a lot more to come. In fact, John, from here on out for the next 30 days, uh, we're going to refer to this as Rocktober, all right? October's out, <laughs> and uh, it's Rocktober from this point forward. Uh, I want our fans going with hashtag Rocktober, and we got a couple more. In fact, hashtag, hashtag Rocktober, hashtag fill the rock, and hashtag yardline pricing, all right? All right. Now, we've, got some, we've all right. got some fun coming, okay? I told Brent, I said, Brent, the status quo is not going to cut it, my man. I want outrageous, outside-the-box thinking. And uh, so we've got some fun stuff coming, some things that have been in the works that we were holding off until October, and so we're, we're ready to roll. So we're going to announce today uh, that uh, some Rocktober fan-friendly initiatives, okay? And uh, they encompass three, four, five different things, and I'll try to roll through a few of them. And let's just start with pricing first of all, and then get to some of the more okay. exciting stuff. But um, first of all, we made a couple. We've introduced a few new um, family-friendly ticket price points uh, this weekend. So um, we're we're gonna have a ten-dollar youth ticket anywhere in the stadium from here on out. Okay, so that's number one. We've got you know on balance, our football ticket prices are among the lowest in the country already. Um, but we've, we always talk about making sure we've got a price point for everybody in our community. So we're going to have a kid's ticket, and it's going to be good for, for any youth uh, 18 and under. Okay, so, you know, anyone below college is going to get that ticket price point anywhere in the stadium. Okay, upper bowl or, or, or lower level. Uh, so that's one. We're also going to introduce in the upper deck a $15 ticket up there. And... Uh, so, so there's going to be there's going to be an affordable price point for everybody. Plus, we're going to have some other things along the way throughout the month. But our standard pricing, we're introducing those two new price points, and then we got some really exciting things. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna announce today again this afternoon um, a daily deal, and we've got 31 of them coming, one for every day of the month. And, and our folks have had their thinking cap on as they put together this schedule. And, and we'll announce a new deal every day that's good only that day. But there's going to be some bargains to be had, all right? Uh, some, really, some really neat things. We're going, we're going to package food with a, with a seat. We're going to package prizes with a seat, um, you know, gift cards with a seat. Um, we'll have really low entry points, crazy price points. Um, at some point, uh, I'll give you an example. We're gonna we're gonna launch a golden ticket. We're on one day this month. I don't know yet what day, and I don't know exactly what the amount will be. Brent and his team are working on this, but the ticket you buy on a particular day will be good for the rest of the season as long as we win. We win, the fan wins who bought that ticket, and they're not gonna have to buy another one. That one's gonna be good as long as we keep on winning. Um, but the very first one we're going to have, which, which is in effect on Friday, for Saturday's game, is yard line pricing. And that's where hashtag yard line pricing comes from. And it's pretty darn simple. You choose your yard line, John, and that's your ticket price. Mm -hmm. So you want to sit on the sideline, on the one yard line? Hand over a dollar, buddy. I got a ticket for you. You want to sit on the 50? I'm going to have one fabulous seat for you. 
You sit on the five, it's five bucks. The seven yard line, it's seven bucks. And uh, so we're gonna try to do some fun things like that, some innovative things like that um, to fill this place up. And uh, we're gonna have another one uh, that's gonna be pretty neat, come a little bit later. Forget William Shatner, or maybe think about William Shatner, but we're gonna have a day this month when you're gonna be able to name your price. We might take it, we might not, but you're gonna have a chance to name your price. So uh, we're gonna do a lot of fun things like that and try to get some people in here who have not been in the rock or haven't come often enough or haven't come recently to come on back and, and enjoy this fabulous football team and what's gonna be you know, potentially an amazing football season. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're also gonna introduce some added value initiatives for our season ticket holders and our Eagle Club members who've been our, our most significant investors, who've stayed with us, who've been with us from day one. We're gonna reward them with some, with some special opportunities and some added value. Um, but I know our season ticket holders because I talk to them all the time. You know, they want other people in this stadium. So I know they're good with, with, with getting outside the box and thinking about some new things so, because they want that seat next to them right. filled up, you know? And, uh, but we'll throw some popcorn in for our season ticket holders and, and, uh, and some other perks uh, to make sure that experience remains special for them. You know, we sold over 3,000 new season tickets this year. And that's a lot of new season tickets in one season, you know, when, when you're coming off a, a three and nine season. And we wanna make sure those people that invested for the first time this year, come on back and renew that season ticket next year. So, um, you know, there, we've always had a great tailgating environment. That's gonna continue. I think Spirit Park, you know, where you're broadcasting from now pregame is gonna be a smashing success since people discover it. And uh, I know we can fill this football stadium up. You know, I don't know if it's gonna be this Saturday, the next Saturday, or, or UTEP at the end of the month uh, on Halloween. But uh, hashtag Rocktober, Rocktober, hashtag fill the rock, hashtag yard line pricing. That's the deal, John. So you gotta pay attention, because uh, you, do. you, you do. never know when you wake up that morning what the deal's gonna be, right? No, no, and, and fans will be able to go to our website uh, now, and this one this weekend, maybe the only one like this, but our fans are going to have to go to the box office, either to the ticket office at the Ferlisi Center um, Friday or Saturday, uh, will be open, um, or at the stadium box office on Saturday. This one won't be available online because of the, the truly unique nature of it. I mean, it's a little hard right. to come up with 50 different price points and do it online. Um, but, uh, but I think it's, it, it's going to be fun. And, uh, and then the rest of the deals, the rest of the month, probably the vast majority uh, will be online or online only. only. So people can go to southernmist.com and see that, and then we'll promote it in the community as well. And uh, we're just gonna try to match the, if we can match the innovation and the trickery of Todd Munkin in, uh, in the uh, uh, administrative headquarters of the Duff Athletic Center, we'll be in great shape the rest of the month and, and the rest of the season. Well, that's exciting. It, uh, I can't wait for that all to uh, sort of develop, and I know the fans will enjoy it and be a part. Because once you're here and you've seen a game at the Rock or spend the day here and see the atmosphere and the excitement, you know, I'm convinced you're going to come back again. And so this is a great way to get people in that stadium on this campus. I think it's going to be a great idea and, and going to cause a lot of excitement around here. I do too. And, and, uh, it's gonna be a fun football season. Already has been, but we got a long ways to go. We're only, what are we, a third, a third of the way into right. the regular season, I guess, right. and and uh, and then hopefully we'll be playing thereafter. And you can be one of those folks that said, "I was there in 2015 when the Golden Absolutely. Eagles did something magic." Absolutely, absolutely. And I've got that coin that yep. you and I talked about I in got my. Mine too. John and I keep these in our pocket, and, uh, and 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 this weekend, you know, the back of this to the top together. This is just another yep. example, you know, and, and this weekend's another opportunity, John, for, for that, for our people to come together, uh, for football, for fun, for fellowship, and, uh, and we're not forgetting our students, faculty, and staff either, right. by the way, right. because I've always believed, and I know you have too, that students bring the energy to the building, whether it's an arena, the peat, the rock, you know, our softball stadium, it doesn't matter. It starts with the students. And uh, I'm proud of our students. You know, the way they turned out for the Mississippi State game, 
Uh, not a bad turnout of students for the Austin P game. Um, but we're going to try to do some more really interesting things with them as well to get them here. And, and again, Brent and Kyle George and the guys have got some things up their sleeve there. Um, we've got some, some promos involving free tuition for a semester, uh, cash, food, uh, TV sets, um, trips. Uh, we're going to roll out some things for our students and then some special initiatives for our faculty and staff. Because to get this done, to fill this place up again with 36,000 plus, it's going to take all of us. Everybody that cares about Southern Miss, now's the time to come together and take this thing to the top. Well, great stuff. It's going to be a fun month. Uh, Rocktober, right? Rocktober, baby. Rocktober. So, uh, everybody, uh, keep watching. SouthernMiss.com. You're going to see all kinds of great deals here over the next 31 days or so. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, Bill. Thanks for visiting with us. And uh, great... Uh, Great ideas and a lot of good stuff there. It's going to be a great month. You know, the last last thing I just thought of it, it this weekend we've got a spectacular fireworks show. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we're starting on October 1st with the yard line pricing. We've got uh, we've got this fireworks show, and I think there's going to be fireworks in the stadium, uh, period. You know, and then we're going to end the month with a very, very happy Halloween on October 31st. All right. Well, thanks for visiting with us and uh, great ideas by uh, – Brent and his crew, so uh, it's going to be fun. Great Rocktober coming up. Thanks, John. For the Golden Eagles, and thanks to Bill for visiting with us. All a lot of fun. Always a lot of fun to sit here and visit with Bill and pick his brain a little bit of some of the great things, the exciting things, the way this athletic department is is growing and getting better and better every day. And I can't do it without you folks. So thanks for all that you do and all you'll continue to do for Southern Miss. We'll see you at the Rock on October third for North Texas. Thanks for being with us and Southern Miss to the top.